In our top story, U.S. President Donald Trump says that he's approved a sanctions bill against China as tensions mount between the two superpowers. Trump said that he also issued an executive order to hold China accountable for what he called oppressive actions against Hong Kong. He was referring to China's new national security law, which Beijing says is aimed at tackling sedition, subversion, and terrorism in Hong Kong. Trump said his country will end its preferential treatment of the territory. The U.S. president also accused Beijing of concealing and unleashing the novel coronavirus on the world. He also labeled the virus the Chinese plague. Trump said he's persuaded many countries not to do business with Chinese telecom giant Huawei. Joining us out of Ontario is uh, Jason Unruhe, political commentator. Hello, Jason. Always a pleasure to have you on Press View, get your perspective here. Now, Jason, this, this row that uh, Donald Trump has had with Huawei, and it's uh, basically trickled over to the UK now, they apparently have an issue with Huawei now, too. Do you think, it, I mean, is, is it sheer bluster? Is there something really there that, is there a threat from Huawei, or do you think it's all political? No, I believe that this is all strictly political. Uh, the, 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 the truth is that the United States is declining as a world economic power and China is very much on the rise. Uh, they are very much rivals in the economic and military sphere. Uh, these attacks on Huawei are nothing more than an attempt to undermine the Chinese state. I mean, these are very similar to uh, what you would see with sanctions across countries, but it's uh, very difficult to sanction China or at least mainland China when you already have so many Americans with bank accounts there, or so many American businesses who receive uh, their, uh, where, where their commodity production is carried out. So you have to target things that are uh, much more tangible or things that are not vulnerable to America. For example, Huawei is very much a wholly Chinese company and even one that is a competitor for uh, domestic American and UK telecom providers. So it is the ideal target to go after. They're not going to hurt themselves by targeting Huawei and they're probably going to boost themselves up by doing so. So this is the, uh, this is the most rational way in order to go about undermining the Chinese economy to go after a giant like Huawei, which also serves their interests. So I think that uh, in terms of the attacks on Huawei, this is very uh, politically motivated, but there's also a very real material economic gain to be had at the same time. And what about his issue with this uh, legislation on Hong Kong sanctioning Beijing for it? Political or does he really care about the human rights situation that you know, he purports to in Hong Kong? Uh, very much the same thing. It's an entire political attack on China, basically because they can't uh, banking sanction uh, mainland China. Now, it's interesting that the United States perceives Hong Kong as some kind of victim of China, yet at the same time, they turn around and sanction them. I mean, this is going to hurt Hong Kong more than it's going to hurt mainland China. But the point here is uh, a, a, a kind of regime change strategy. They're trying to cause a, an economic destabilization inside of Hong Kong in order to facilitate unrest, which would then be used and directed against any uh, allegiance or uh, to China. In other words, to uh, foment a, a separatist uh, sentiment in the country. As we previously saw, the whole uh, Hong Kong, uh, free Hong Kong movement uh, was already a failure. It's already been uh, it's already been defeated. And then once uh, the new Chinese law came into effect, essentially the leaders who had uh, mostly been under the thumb of the United States in Hong Kong leading those movements have already surrendered out of fear of any retribution for trying to uh, overthrow the state, which is basically something that exists in every country. No country in the world tolerates. Uh, any kind of subversion to try to dismantle and abolish the state or the uh, existing political or economic system. This, this is a very, and, a very common thing. And Jay, before we let you go, he also accused Beijing of concealing and unleashing the novel coronavirus on the planet. Your final thoughts on that? Complete nonsense. This is just another a political ploy against China itself. Uh, as we saw, I believe it was Italy that found evidence in uh, sewer tests that uh, the coronavirus had been in 
uh, at least I believe it was uh, Italy, two months before there was any reports of it inside of China. I mean, this is just another pressure tactic. Uh, these kinds of diseases happen. They happen fairly often, about every century or so. And there's no reason to believe that China deliberately released this on the world when, you know, they already lost uh, tens of billions, if not hundreds of billions in their own economy. I mean, it's just simply nonsense that they would do this themselves just to get at others. I mean, this is just stirring up anti-Chinese sentiment to further the, the U.S. empire and its ally, the U.K. And possibly defer, uh, defer uh, blame on himself for the way he's handled it back home. Thanks for joining us, Jason. Always a pleasure to have you on out of Ontario. Jason Unruhe, political commentator.